Hi all, welcome back to Make More Bonsai, John here. Let's do something fun and easy today. We're going to perform some initial styling on this Chinese elm. What's really kind of cool about this little elm is, not only is it a great example of a sinuous root or clump style planting, meaning a group of trunks emerging from the same root base, it's also a great opportunity for us to talk about group plantings or forest bonsai styling from a design perspective and discuss on a conceptual level how to approach a bonsai like this. What's more, it's only two years old, grown from a root that was trimmed from this tree, then it was planted into a bonsai pod. Many species of trees and plants can be propagated by trimming off a section of a root and planting it. Chinese elm, Ulmus parvifolia, can be very easily propagated using this root cutting technique. In fact, Ulmus parvifolia, Chinese elm, is a great all-around species to create bonsai with. It's super hardy, fast-developing, deciduous tree that can grow like four to six feet per year when in the ground. Its bark can vary from a smoothish texture to a rough and cork-like bark depending on age and growing conditions. It has small oval leaves that alternate through each branch, which really helps when styling and building branch ramification on a bonsai. And because it's such an aggressive grower, it can push out a second flush of leaves during the growing season, which means it can be completely defoliated and a second set of leaves will be even smaller. <gasps> I can keep going. It's able to thrive in many different environments from super warm areas that barely ever experience a cold winter to areas that have cold winters, though it may need some protection from the coldest winter. It still pulls through just fine. It likes sun and partial shade as well, so it doesn't need any special placement. It's an awesome and forgiving species that's a great choice for a beginner or even if you have experience growing bonsai. If we take a closer look and see where to start, there are five trunks emerging from a wide root base. They each have a similar width, but there is one or two that are slightly wider. They're all coming from different locations on that root base. This helps convey some depth. A helpful thing to consider when designing a group planting is, how does one illustrate depth and a natural appearance, especially on a small composition such as this one? I mean, on a large enough scale, it's far less difficult since natural visual perspective does do all the work. On a bonsai, it's more of an exaggeration of perspective that illustrates the visual cues that define depth. Here are a few design concepts to show how to achieve this. Alignment. When you align objects in a row, you help create a path that draws attention in the direction you wish. These visual cues kind of force the viewer to follow the direction of each point, leading to the next. However, you need a minimum of three points to create that visual energy to drive the eye. If we reduce that to two points, that energy is diminished, or maybe it's fair to say no energy is even generated. Add that additional point and you can see the influence alignment has on a composition. So with this idea that we need at least three points to energize alignment, how do we use this in a bonsai group planting to make that group planting look more natural? Try to ensure no three trees fall directly in line with each other. This disrupts the symmetrical construct that alignment energizes and reinforces an overall asymmetry that drives the emotional connection to a composition. Let's drive that asymmetrical concept further with distance. Let's take those three points again. Here they are in a row with equal distance between them and that symmetrical alignment energy is really strong. If we move that middle one out of alignment, but still maintain equal distance, that energy is essentially the same because linear alignment is now replaced with spatial alignment. Still really symmetrical and feels very planned. To drive that emotional asymmetrical connection, we can move any one of these points closer or further away from each other and achieve a more natural composition. How this applies to a group planting is, try to ensure the distance among the trees in the group are different. This will help reinforce an asymmetrical alignment. Okay, last concept, I promise. Width and height. To keep it brief, we're going to smush two of them together into one idea, size. And back to those three points again. Here they are, arranged asymmetrically in both alignment and distance. All three, however, are equal in width. There is still a bit of symmetrical visual energy lingering in the composition. Change the width, even just a little bit, and the energy shifts to a more natural and emotional connection. Change those widths even more drastically, and it evokes a very different emotional connection. Let's shift our perspective from this overhead view and consider height in relation to width. Here are those three points extended into trunks like trees, each the same height and width. That symmetrical energy is once again very present. The tops are the same on all three. We can't really tell if they are aligned or equal distance or if they are arranged asymmetrically from this perspective. Even if we adjust their widths to be different, their height is still conveying symmetry. If we choose to communicate using size, the wider equals older and taller, 
ensuring the tallest tree is also the widest and the shortest is also the most narrow, the emotional energy connection within the composition is established. Adding distance to the composition, the tension in the composition increases. Alignment helps to reinforce perspective and the asymmetrical energy in the design is more fully realized. In this case, wide and taller is closer to the viewer and narrow and short trunks are further from the viewer. Great, now using these tools of alignment, distance and size, let's apply these concepts to this clump of elms and see where it takes us. Before we get into it, here on the Make More Bonsai channel, the main focus has been to help create a place to learn a bit about bonsai, offered in an easygoing, semi-fun way for any experience level. In order to do that, we're hoping to reach 5,000 subscribers to engage with the content and tickle the tummy of the YouTube algorithm so this channel gets offered to more folks like you who are watching this right now. So, when this channel reaches the 5,000 subscriber mark, this awesome little Chinese elm will be sent to whoever is subscribed, hits that like button, and leaves a comment below that includes hashtag bonsai in the comment. The winner will be chosen at random and will be announced right here on this channel, so stay tuned. That lucky winner will also need to live within the continental United States to ensure the tree arrives alive and healthy. This Chinese elm will grow well anywhere in the United States, and it's a great species whether you're just getting into bonsai or you're someone who feels like Godzilla when you step out into your garden. With your help, we can reach more and more people with just a few clicks or taps. Thanks so much for taking the time to subscribe, like, and comment with hashtag bonsai. Now back to the fun. This is where it gets fun. All of the trunks are emerging from a single base along the roots in this bonsai. It's not like I was placing them as they were separate trunks, although now that I said that, I suppose one could decide to deliberately graft trunks onto a root. And now that I said that, I'm sure there's someone who would conceive of this and execute it well and make a really nice bonsai because most people growing bonsai are curious, resourceful, and a little crazy to try all kinds of things, but I digress. When you have a bunch of trunks growing from a root like this tree, you can selectively choose which trunks to keep and develop and remove the ones that don't work. Which is what happened with this tree. Look, you can see the remnants of a trunk that was removed. Each of these trunks were chosen using the alignment distance and size concept. The end result was no instance in which three trunks would align to form a straight line and all of them are different distances apart when viewed from the front. And that was a main factor that led to the choice of the front of this composition. So there's alignment and distance. What about size? That is something we can take control of by understanding the physiology of a deciduous tree in general and apply that to the Chinese elm. But first, let's explore a concept for this design, then apply all of that physiology stuff to reinforce the development of that design. Here in Texas, and I'm sure lots of other places, there are wide open grazing fields where cows with their big heads and empty blank eyes just wandering around eating and swatting flies with their tails. Scattered around these fields, there will be small groupings of trees that were left to grow open on these fields. These trees spread out and provide a cool shady place for cows to hang out under on a hot sunny day. This sets the scene for this concept, a peaceful kind of oasis, away from the troubles of the world, probably no cell service, where you can feel your brain just empty out. That's the broad concept behind this design, so let's run with that. These groupings of trees have a few things influencing their development. They have access to plenty of sunlight so they can spread out pretty wide, and with only a few trees to compete with, one tree will claim an area for branches to occupy, the other ones nearby will claim a different open space. They also have very little protection during storms, so occasionally one tree will lose a branch or upper trunk when struck by a lightning or a strong wind. You'll see some trees get stunted from this storm damage, so another tree will grow taller to quickly reclaim the space that gets opened up. These are all things that we can use the tool of size to help communicate a story by applying it to the design. In this case, a wider trunk would communicate age more than it would indicate height. Height, in this case, would communicate youthful, aggressive growth on a tree that would have taken over space that was once occupied by a larger, older tree that was affected by storm damage. Okay, so we have a concept that will help apply the emotional connection asymmetry helps drive, using alignment, distance, and size to apply to the concept's design. Now we can consider all that physiology stuff. It's autumn. Leaves are no longer gathering energy. They start dropping, leaving behind next year's buds. Deciduous trees are pulling all of the resources into the branches and trunks to store that energy until next spring, causing them to thicken. This is a great time to apply wire and set up some structure to shore up that design concept and get those trunks placed into position. Because the trunks are thickening at this time of year, there's a good chance that this wire will do its job fairly quickly, which is a great way to get a head start on the design. It's possible that this wire will need to be removed within six weeks to two months before it starts to cut into the trunks. So it's a good idea to check on their development often during the winter 
and remove wire to avoid any scarring on the trunks. I want to spread those trunks out to allow more room for branches to develop, so we're going to offer them lots of space to occupy. The main focus right now are the trunks. We will focus on branches once the trunks are more developed through next year. One thing to keep in mind is not to prune too much. It's okay to remove some branches that may be in the way, the thing to keep in mind is we want this tree to focus its energy on dormancy, not to stimulate new buds to open. Any new growth will not have enough time to harden off before winter. We want these buds to remain closed until spring the following year. When applying the wire, be sure to make contact with the trunk. To do this, one hand holds the wire in place while the other hand wraps the wire around it. Loop the wire around the trunk, trying to maintain an even 45 to 55 degree angle between each pass. The wire shouldn't be pulled tight, just resting on the surface. A few gaps are okay as long as the majority of the wire is making contact. The trunk or the pod should not be used for any leverage. All of the work and pressure should be done with your hands supporting the wire, while making every attempt to not damage the bark while applying the wire. When the loop is finished, the support hand moves to the new coil after the loop is complete, and it repeats. Complete loop, hand moves up. Complete loop, hand moves up. The degree of angle of the wire will assist in maintaining the energy of the bend you apply. And because there's a spread of an even 45 to 55 degrees between each coil, the wire will also spread the energy needed to hold it in place over a wide area. If the wire were coiled too close together like a spring, there won't be enough friction and leverage to hold the shape. Too wide, like 60 degrees or so, and there isn't enough actual wire to spread the energy well enough to hold. 45 to 55 degrees is the correct balance of spacing to gain the most control over the bend. When bending the trunks, gain a firm hold and bend slightly past where you want the trunk to land. Then release and let the trunk relax into place, letting the energy of the bend settle. This may need to be repeated until the shape is correct. When bending, try to spread out the energy of the bend over a wide enough area so not to put too much pressure on a focused single point on the trunk. To help prevent breakage, try to keep the outside loop of wire on the outside of the bend. Feel and listen for the strain on the trunk. Take your time. It's better to need to make a few passes on a bend than to rush and have all of the energy focus on that one point without time to relieve that stress. We can see after redirecting the trunks, each tree now occupies a space that fits within the logic of the design concept. This is where we stop for this year. All that's left to do with this tree is watch for wire cutting in too deeply as the trunks expand over the next few months until spring. When spring arrives, the leaf buds will open up and new buds will pop up all along the trunks. You can remove the buds that are appearing in places that will not suit the design at this time. The ones that are needed, however, should be allowed to grow and expand until the new growth hardens off and becomes more stiff. At that point, the energy will need to be managed on each trunk to encourage the necessary activity within the vascular system of each tree. To gain that control over each tree's vascular activity, let's consider a main driving factor behind what influences this. If a tree has more leaves, it needs more resources to move throughout the tree to support all of the foliage. The leaves will demand more water, so more of that will be directed to them. Those trees that have more leaves will also produce more food for the tree, so there'll be more activity that will contribute to the thickening of those trunks. That will also be a factor in the trees that we don't want to thicken at the same rate. If the amount of foliage is limited, the resource movement driven by the demand is reduced, those trunks will develop at a slower rate. Different rates of development will help create a range of trunk size throughout the design, which will reinforce asymmetry within the design. I plan to encourage this trunk and this trunk to thicken more than the other three. The shorter trunk in front would represent the older tree that was stunted by a storm, and the taller trunk would be the tree that occupied the space that the tree that was damaged opened up for it. The branches on those trees will be left to grow long, with a few sacrifice branches that will be developed low on the trunks and facing the back, so they can be removed later and not affect the design with big scars. The other trunks will receive a different treatment. The amount of foliage on them will be limited to reduce the activity of their vascular system, which will prevent the trunks from becoming too thick. This will help keep their width in check and create an asymmetrical sizing among the trunk widths. We'll check in on this clump planting in spring to make some pruning decisions that will help push this bonsai forward. Within three to five years, this little two-year-old composition may be well on its way to seeing the design concept realized and start to make the emotional connections the concept is meant to drive. Thanks for watching. I hope you gained some helpful insights from this little video. 
Maybe like and subscribe and leave a comment below that includes hashtag bonsai in the comment to be in the running for the Chinese Elm giveaway when this channel reaches 5,000 subscribers and possibly check out the book or the teaser links in the show more section below. There's even a hat available now because bonsai stuff is cool and so are you for helping this channel.